What is the scientific method, and why is understanding research methods so important? You already know that social psychologists rely on this method to investigate social behavior, but what exactly is the scientific method? This process involves developing and testing predictions about social behavior, and then interpreting and reporting the results to the scientific community. There are two broad categories of research. Basic research seeks to enhance our basic understanding of human behavior by testing hypotheses and theories. Applied research seeks to increase our understanding of naturally occurring phenomena and to find solutions to practical problems. The process is objective in the sense that researchers rely on the data instead of their personal experiences and opinions. Their job is to see the problem or phenomenon through an inquisitive, not opinionated, lens. The process is systematic because researchers follow the same basic steps and try to be consistent and accurate in what they do. And finally, the process is quantifiable. Researchers attempt to measure or label what they observe. Sometimes these labels are numbers, other times they're descriptive words. Social psychologists understand the importance of research methods, but why do we ask undergraduate students to learn about them? Here are two of the many reasons why we think this is a good idea. One, it can improve your reasoning abilities across a variety of situations, like completing your coursework, excelling at work, and thinking critically about social media posts. Instead of believing every study or poll, we can learn how to spot the strengths and weaknesses of various research methods and therefore better understand the strengths and weaknesses of the conclusions that follow. Two, it can help us understand the studies conducted by social psychologists. For example, you will learn about a variety of experiments that were conducted in the mid to late 1900s, many of which could not be replicated in the 21st century due to ethical standards. Consider this lecture to be a review of research methods so that you can absorb the details of the studies you'll cover in the remaining lecture. This figure depicts the steps of the scientific method. The first step is to ask questions. Ideas for research in social psychology come from everywhere, personal experiences and observations, events in the news, and research from other disciplines. The second step is the literature search. Before pursuing an idea, it's important to see what research has already been done. Electronic databases, like those provided by the university's library, provide access to a wealth of information in all disciplines. We'll cover the next four stages of the process in this lecture. Make predictions based on your knowledge of the topics, define the variables you will investigate, choose an appropriate research method, and design the procedures you'll use to execute your plan. The final stages of the scientific method involve testing predictions, analyzing results, and reporting results to share with the community. Let's define some important terms before we move forward. Using your initial search of the literature, you will develop a hypothesis to outline the conditions under when some event will occur. This hypothesis can then be tested using an appropriate research design. Once you develop a better understanding of a particular phenomena, you will explain it more precisely by developing a theory, which is an organized set of principles that explain that phenomena. The best theories are precise, explain all the relevant information, and generate research that can either support or disconfirm them. We should revise our theory based on the results of our own and others' studies of it. In order to test a hypothesis, each conceptual variable must first be transformed from abstract terms into an operational definition or the specific procedures for measuring a variable. Researchers examine construct validity to assess whether a measure actually measured what it was designed to measure. Here is an example of an hypothesis and a corresponding operationalization of the variables. The hypothesis is, students are more likely to become friends with the classmates sitting next to them than those who do not. We might define students as those who attend this class at this university in this semester, 
We might define friends as spending at least one hour per week together. And we might define next to as sitting in adjacent seats that are no more than 10 feet apart. As you can see, this definition is very specific and unique to our study. Other researchers could include students from multiple universities or full-time employees. Or they might define friendship and next to differently. In the next section, you'll learn more about one of the most commonly used methods in the social sciences, descriptive research.